Hello and welcome to Real Experts live webinar. Today's program is about the great eight, eight things you must do to survive and thrive in real estate. Now, as you know, this is a live interactive program and so we welcome any of your questions. Presenting today is Steve Strickholm, who is the founder and president of KDNA Gold Tracker Software Company. We thank you for joining us, Steve, and welcome. Hi, I'm Steve Strickholm. I'm the president and founder of KDNA Gold Tracker, and we're here to talk about the, uh, the, the grade eight, the eight things you must do to survive and thrive in real estate. Now, my background is 20 years as a social workologist working with people with lifelong disabilities. And what we did with these people with major mental illness and uh, mental retardation is we helped these young adults find and keep jobs and housing in the community. And what we did is we had a paper-based goal tracking system and it went like this. Did you set your alarm clock? Did you uh, get up on time, take a shower, eat breakfast, put on work appropriate clothing, uh, take public transportation, get to your day program or your part-time job, stay on task, have good coworker relations, come home, cook dinner, clean up, set your alarm clock, go to bed on time. It's a daily cycle of what we needed to work independently in the community. And because we tracked people's behaviors with them and they worked on these skills and they became dramatically better at, at doing these things, they became, they, they were able to move out of institutions and live in apartments and have a volunteer or part time and sometimes a full time paying job in the community for my first 20 years. And then I have a license as a real estate agent and also as an insurance broker. And I then uh, had a sales career and I made 400 calls a week and three to 400 calls a week uh, in order to make the number of sales I needed to make. And I knew that because of my conversion ratios. And so if it was Sunday afternoon and I'd only made 250 calls and I could either go out on my deck and barbecue or I could make another 100 calls and uh, have a deck to barbecue on six months down the road because I had a mortgage that I needed to, uh, to make. So, uh, and I actually, um, Actually, I wore out a phone in my first six months. The button stopped working, so then I went to an auto dialer, and that's uh, and, and I kept on making those three to four hundred calls a week. And then, out of all of that experience, uh, we created KDNA for people and sales. And Knowledge DNA is a as a smartphone mobile goal tracking system for people in sales, and particularly in real estate. And we worked with over <clears throat> over twenty thousand agents now in the last four to five years. And KDNA has been used by, currently by hundreds of managers and coaches and over a thousand real estate teams. And I'll talk about teams a little bit down the road as well. So out of all of this experience, we developed the grade eight, the, 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 the eight things that are the ADLs, the activities of daily living for people in sales, real estate. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But a couple of great quotes that our coaches uh, have said to us. One of our coaches says, high producers operate in reality. And that's what we do with a grade eight. It's, these, are, these, are, these, are, these are your real things that you need to do uh, to be successful. Um, another quote, great quote, goal tracking stops my people from hallucinating that they are actually working. And then uh, from the past, Aristotle, we are what we repeatedly do. Uh, excellence is, is an, not an, one act, but it's a habit over time. So here are the grade eight. Here are the eight things that we're going to cover today. Uh, and we'll go to these in just in a little bit of depth. But uh, you know, there's a daily morning mindset and the preparation. Then there's the hours of lead generating. Those lead to two-way contacts and or two-way conversations and one-way contacts. And then from uh, contacting, we get buyer and listing appointments. We take listings and then we open and we close sales. Now, uh, once we have this process in place and if we're goal tracking, now we can look at our conversion ratios. And that's the second half of what we're going to talk about today. We'll actually share with you data we have from around the country with thousands of agents in terms of how many of each of these activities they need to do in order to make a living. And that's, uh, that's the other uh, key part of uh, building your sales process. Uh, why do we create the, the grade eight? Well, and why did we create Katie and the Goal Tracker? Well, it's because statistics show that within the first year, 75% uh, of agents are, have either left the business or are not making the income that they want. And that number is 87% after five years. So how do, that's like one out of 10 agents is really having the success that they want in real estate. How do we fix that? How do we give people the tools they need to get through this, this valley of death 
so that they create the the income and, and get they get the the result that they want from you know you know i mean it took me like six months to get my real estate license i and uh, i studied it a lot and i learned all this stuff and then you come out and it's like well okay i'm ready to i am ready to write up a transaction where are the clients and then you find out that well they never actually told me that i had to build a business out of nothing and how do i do that i don't know and that's what the grade eight is about so the first thing the first of the grade eight is daily mindset preparation um you know if, if the first thing we do is we get up in the morning we run a brush through our hair, we grab our coffee, and we'll look at a newspaper. Well, what do newspapers uh, show us? They, they, they give us drama because they want us to read them and, and, and look at the ads. If they really gave us the news, it'd be like 100, 100 parents dropped off their kids at school and, and, and everything went great. But that's, that's news. So when we read the newspaper, it's bad stuff. And if we're in a bad mood and we get on the phone and we start calling and contacting people, we're not smiling and dialing, which is what we talk about, right, in sales, smiling and dialing. How do we get to a positive problem-solving space with our prospects and our clients to start the day? So, you know, we, we suggest like some kind of mind calming. It can be a, a gratitude meditation. That's what I do every morning for 10 or 15 minutes. I do that this morning uh, before our, our seminar today. There are people that do affirmations, prayer, uh, meditation, whatever works for you in terms of putting yourself in a positive mindset. And then going through your schedule and uh, doing time blocking. And, and, and am I scheduling the two to three hours I need to do today in order to, uh, you know, to do the lead generating and prospecting and follow up? And then script review and readiness. I know that uh, in my sales career, I probably rewrote my scripts 50 times and I practiced them easily 100 times. Because you know, when we're talking to somebody, we have 10, 15 seconds for them to like us and to uh, want to hear about the rest of what we say. And so then the final thing is, do we have a way of tracking and being accountable for what we're doing so we know if we're doing the activities that are going to produce the results that we need? So really quickly, like, why is tracking so important? Well, there was a university that did a study of 250 business professionals, and they divided them randomly into two groups. And one group was the thinking group. They went through each week just thinking about their goals. And then there was a tracking group. These people wrote down their goals tracked them daily during the week, had weekly progress reports, and shared the results with other people. And what they found is that the tracking group was almost 80% more productive than the thinking group. The thinking group didn't even achieve, as you can see, half of their goals, 43% of their goals, and the tracking group achieved over three quarters of their goals consistently week after week. So here's an example. This is a sheet that I used uh, to track uh, what I did. What you do with this kind of paper-based sheet is every time you make a phone call or attempt to contact somebody, you put a dash through the number. So you might do dash one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then on your eighth try, you might actually have a conversation with somebody. So you circle that. And then you dash, you put dashes through the other numbers. And at the end of the day, you might have, uh, you know, 30 one-way contacts, uh, eight two-way, and two and two or three hours of, of, of lead generating and contacting. And you go through this day by day by day, and what's great about a sheet like this is you look at it and you go, my gosh, this is my this is my paycheck. Uh, I this is the activity that's going to create the appointments that's going to create my sales. So this is just one example of what you can do to, for tracking. So uh, as you can see, you know, in that tracking sheet, you know, how many hours of lead generating did I do? Being accountable for that every day, that's actually your that's your prospecting time. That's not only reaching out to new clients, but nurturing your previous contacts uh, that you're moving through your sales pipeline. We have attorneys using our system, and uh, they talk about these as their billable hours. Because you can actually, when you do your conversion ratios, you'll see that every hour you do lead generating might be worth two or three hundred dollars. So if you're doing two to three hours of lead generating every morning, time blocking that, uh, and it's worth $250 and you do three hours, that's $750 that you put into your sales pipeline that morning. If you do that four mornings a week, that's $3,000 a week and you're on track for over $100,000 in income in your business. So that's, that's the, you know, what is your activity time worth? That's conversion ratios and that's something we're going to be talking about a little bit later. So the third of the uh, grade eights then is now you've done uh, your mindset preparation and you know, you're, you're you're comfortable with your, with your scripts and you put in the hours. Now, how many two-way conversations are you having? Uh, a conversation is a voice-to-voice. -voice. It's like, you know, where I'm hearing the emotion and we're having a dynamic interaction uh, back and forth. 
is real time. And um, so it can be phone call, it can be in person, it can be Skype, but it has to be a real time dynamic communication. Uh, first time contacts are important, but as we'll see in a minute, you know, the follow ups are really critical because that's the majority of your time should be doing follow calls. Uh, the same now is true with one way contacts. That's the grade eight number four. That can be, uh, you know, in my case, it was you know, phone calling and dialing because I was working a lot with Internet leads and referrals uh, and some sphere of influence. So I was doing a lot of phone calling initially, but it can be text messaging. It can be email, social media posts and so forth. Important thing here is it's not real time. Uh, and again, the first time contacts are important, but call continuity, uh, the majority of your time should be in follow ups. Now, why is that? So, you know, the mistake a lot of people make is they, they contact a whole bunch of people, they don't hear back from them, they might try a second time, then they give up, right? Well, guess what? A, a lot of studies have been done uh, that show that uh, you don't make that many sales in the first within your first couple contacts, and actually 80% of sales are made in the fifth contact or later. Uh, I know when I look at my my contacting sheets, and you know in terms of what I went through to make sales with people, my gosh, I would have 10, 20, 30 contacts with somebody uh, before I had a transaction completed. And I think if you look at your own history, you'll find that this is really true as well. Um, and, it, and again, this is why it's important to track your numbers so that you make sure you have the activity, uh, that you are doing enough activity to have enough follow-up contacts, that you're moving your prospects through your pipeline. Because if you're only doing 10 or 20 contacts a week, you're not nurturing enough people to create the kind of sales that you're going to want. Okay, so now you've done preparation and you've done contacting, you put in the hours, now you're moving towards having your buyer and your listing appointments. Now, buyer appointments, uh, they are easier to set. Uh, usually newer agents will be focusing on buyer appointments or if you have a team, a team might have, um, and I'll talk about teams in a minute, but you might have a couple of agents on a team doing the buyer appointments and the rainmaker doing the listings. The thing about them, they're easier to get, but they're less likely to close and you're only working potentially with one side of the transaction. Whereas with listing appointments, they're, they're harder to get, harder to set, but the great thing about them is that you control inventory uh, and that makes them more valuable. And you also have the opportunity to uh, get two sides of a transaction, both selling the property and then helping the owners uh, buy a new property, right? Okay. So the result of all of that is to get a listing agreement signed. Now, some people work with buyer broker agreements. We're not including that here and that's great, but the, the listing agreements are, are even more powerful. So the most important thing there to remember is that there's a lot more competition on the listing side. So you have to come prepared for the CMA, you know, competitive market analysis and so forth. And it's, and it's so important in my experience, and I think, you know, we all know this, that, you know, it, it's all about a personal connection when you're in the door. It's the first thing is what you're selling is, as I learned, was not my expertise. It was, do they trust me and do they like me? Uh, there's that saying, I don't know how much you, I don't care how much you know until how, I know how much you care. Because I can have all the expertise in the world, but if the client doesn't think I'm going to represent their interest and communicate with them well and really listen to what they want and be good to work with and they like me, they're, they're not going to care. They're going to go find somebody else that they feel comfortable with. And we really have about 10 seconds to make that first impression, which is, by the way, why I practice my scripts over and over again. Uh, so that when I watch, I've been building trust with them. So now once you get the listing uh, agreement, now guess what? You can hold, hold open houses. That brings in more leads. You've got inventory. That creates career stability. Uh, many experienced real estate agents build their careers with listings because, again, they have inventory and they know that they're going to be selling and bringing in extra leads on open houses and so forth. So, again, here are the, the grade eight. There's the... Uh, you know, daily setting appointments, getting listings, and then finally, uh, sales and conversion ratios. Oh, I forgot to uh, mention one thing. I'm going to go back for a second. Um, I was going to talk about teams. So <clears throat> what we find is that as real estate agents get more and more listings, now they start getting more and more leads than they can handle. And so that's why we work with over a thousand teams around the country. Uh, and uh, what so what will happen is that the rainmaker people on a team, five or seven people on a team, two or three of them would be buyer agents. They're the ones handling all the buyer leads. The rainmaker's handling the listings. Then they've got a transaction coordinator and an administrator, and that's five or seven people on a team. 
So that's also what you can do as you focus on listings and you grow your, your lead base and your activity base uh, is you can create uh, teams as well. So uh, again, coming back to our grade eight list, the, the last thing I wanna focus on here is conversion ratios. Because now if you're doing all these things and you're tracking your numbers, now you can come to the second key part of building your business, which is how much of each of these activities do I need to produce a sale? That's your conversion ratios. It's the science of sales and it's your second secret weapon. Uh, the first secret weapon is, uh, of course, uh, having the activity and tracking your activity. And then the second one is knowing how much of each activity, but how effective you are that creates your results. So let's say that you uh, are the best salesperson in the world, you, you close 100%, but you don't do any activity. You just sit on the beach uh, and you're surfing or you're out you know, bowling or doing whatever is your hobby and just hoping people will come up and talk to you about real estate. Well, you might make some sales, but if, you have, if you're a great closer and you have no activity, you'll make no income. On the other hand, if you have a ton of activity and you can't close to save your life, you'll also have no income. Income is a result of activity times effectiveness, and that's what conversion ratios are about. It's how many of each of these do you need to produce one sale? How many hours of lead generating? How many two-way and one-way contacts? How many buyer and listing appointments? So, um, and, it, and then when you know your conversion ratios and you know the ratios, you can calculate how much activity you need to do to produce the results. So guess what? We have some great data from thousands of real estate agents that we've worked with around the country. And we have looked at you know, what the conversion ratios are for, for example, expert agents, people been in the business five, 10, 15 years, uh, average agents, and then uh, new agents. Now, uh, what you can see here, let's if we take the average column here. <clears throat> what we see is that the average agent takes about 30 hours of lead generating and 160 two-way conversations to make a sale. Uh, 300 touches approximately, and that results in five or maybe six appointments with one listing sign, and then that results in one sale. Now, uh, an expert agent, somebody who's uh, been in the business for 10 or 15 years and is working off a lot of referrals, those numbers might be half or less. So they might only need you know, 15 hours of lead generating and 80 conversations to make a sale. Uh, I know some agents that are working uh, you know, 80% off of referrals. And one agent I know, she takes her 30 to 40 conversations to make a sale. And she's actually created a team, right? She's bringing in her daughter and, and uh, son-in-law and a, another person or two and creating a team because she's now got more activity than she can handle. But she's really, really good at it. And then we also see agents that, that are new, they might need even uh, you know, more activity in order to make a sale because they don't know their scripts yet. They don't necessarily have figured out what the, how they want to generate their leads. Um, and again, leads can be uh, through uh, you know, uh, door knocking. There are all sorts of ways we can create leads, internet leads and so forth. Uh, so they may not yet have figured out exactly how to build their business and they're not really good yet at, at developing relationships and closing them. So their, their numbers can be higher. Now, what you can do with these numbers is you can actually take them and calculate what do I need to do in order to make a certain amount of income for the year. So let's say that you want to make $100,000 uh, or a little bit more in the year. And let's say that's uh, a sale every other week. So 20 to 24 uh, sales a year. So what you then need to do is say, okay, take my conversion ratios and take 50% of them because I need to do 50% of a sale a week. So if you're an average agent, and and you want to you need to do 160 uh, two-way conversations in order to make a sale. Well, you got to do 80 a week. Now, if you do those 80 a week, and you and and you can see you do 15 hours of lead generating a week. Now that's a lot, but if you if you have an average commission of five or six thousand dollars, and you're making 20 to 24 sales in a year, you're making 100 to 150 thousand dollars that year. There's a lot of time commitment, a lot of work, but uh, as Zig Ziglar says, if, we, uh, if you want what others do not have, you must do what others will not do. And this shows you what you need to do to not work in a cubicle and making you know, $12 an hour and getting a 3% raise uh, every year if the boss likes you. So these are your conversion ratios. If you're an expert, of course, the numbers can be lower. And if you're a new agent, uh, the numbers can be somewhat higher. Uh, Jane, are there any questions so far you've got from the group? 
Yes, I'm sorry, I almost interrupted you a couple times there, but you asked the question at the right time. I was wondering, and some other people were wondering, how do these conversion ratios, are they the same across the country for everyone, or are they, do they vary? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, it's, it varies not only by the experience level of the agent, but by how, uh, how expensive the market is. Uh, for example, if you, when we look at like the Midwest, like say Kansas City, where the average uh, sale price is 200000 to $300,000, and the agent is making, let's say, you know, $6,000 on a commission, they might only need to make 100 conversations to make a sale, and that would be even a newer agent. Whereas if we go to Southern California, where I live, let's say you go down to Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, where the average price point is a million dollars, uh, it might take an agent 400 or 500 conversations uh, to make a sale. But they're getting a 20000 or $30,000 commission rather than a five or $6,000 commission. Now, what's really interesting is that we look uh, around the country and we see that the dollar value for an agent of similar experience is about the same. So if you're in Kansas City and you're doing 100 conversations to make a $6,000 commission, okay, each conversation is worth, what, $60. That's the monetization of your conversion ratios. And, and now if you're down in Southern California and it's, and it's taking you 600 conversations uh, to, to make a sale, you might also find that each conversation is worth about $60. So, or it could be $40 or $30, or it could be even higher depending on how experienced you are. But, but definitely conversion ratios vary a lot by the price point around the country. But it's interesting that, you know, the higher the commissions are, the more agents are working in an area. So it turns out that the actual dollar value of an hourly generating or of a two-way conversation is, is worth about the same for an agent of similar experience in, in various parts of the country. Great question, Jane. Are there any other questions so far from the folks? Well, yes, um, we do have a couple. One question which we can deal with at the end, I think, is people are interested in getting this the slides themselves. But we could talk about that at the end ah. um, if you'd like. Um, but another thing is in regards to getting leads or being yeah. motivated yourself, uh, if there are questions in regards to answer <clears throat> How you might answer that? How do you motivate yourself to do that many hours? And ah, right. Well, it's yeah, it's really interesting. We see a lot of data from agents, and you know, there's that statistic of 75 to 90 percent of agents are not successful in real estate or making the income that they want in real estate. And we see a lot of agents doing 20 or 25 conversations a day. You know, like three or four conversations a day, and they want to make a, a, a career in real estate, and 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 they're not. They're not building their pipeline. They're not having enough activity in order to, you, you see these actual conversion ratios. You know, if you're making, if you're doing 20 conversations a week, well, then you're going to make a sale every two or three months. So you guess what? You're going to be earning thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. And that's the cycle we're trying to break here with the grade eight. We're trying to get agents to do the things that they need to do to really have that level of success. So two questions. One is, well, where do the leads come from? Well, uh, you know, many places, you know, I did a lot of internet leads uh, and sphere of influence and referrals, but my goodness, I mean, that's the great thing about sales. It's incredibly creative. You know, there's, there's door knocking farming. I know an agent down in uh, San Fernando Valley, he goes out door knocking and this is in a hundred degree weather, <laughs> two hours a day, five days a week, no matter what. And this guy made $150,000 this is his second year in real estate. Um, and, and, you know, when you ask other agents, who wants to come do this with me? And not that many people raise their hands. Like, well, okay, he's making $100,000, 150000 a year. He's doing door knocking, but he's committed to it. The, the most important thing is you, you find what works for you, whether it's uh, internet leads or door knocking or, heck, I'd be hosting open houses every week, you know, as a new real estate agent. Uh, there's uh, for sale by owners. So that's kind of tricky. Uh, there's expires. That's kind of tricky. You know, you're dealing with listings that have expired. That takes more expertise. Uh, there's sphere of influence. I mean, that everybody should be doing that and calling and contacting all the people they know and, hey, can I help you or do you know anybody I can help with real estate? Uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so many different ways to generate the leads. And then, of course, the next question is, well, then well, how do I motivate myself to follow up with them and do the level of activity with those leads so I get the results I need, you know, looking at these conversion ratios. And so motivation comes from, I think, 
it's it's the first part it's like mindset preparation am, am i feeling in a positive um solution oriented place as opposed to problem centered place when I get on the phone and when I start talking to people. And that has a lot to do with time blocking and holding myself accountable for putting in the hours of lead generating. Uh, like I did, you know, Sunday afternoon, I'd come and I'd make a hundred calls because I wanted, I wanted a, a deck to barbecue on six months from now because <laughs> I had a mortgage I needed to make. Um, but, but I think it's really important in there also is script practicing, whatever, type of lead activity you have, open houses, phone calling, whatever, they take different kinds of scripts, door knocking, those are different scripts. Uh, create the scripts that you need, practice them, practice them incessantly, so you feel really, really comfortable with them, so they don't sound canned, they're like coming out of you organically. And when you do the positive mindset, and you schedule the time to do lead generating and follow-ups, remember 80% should be follow-ups, and you have the scripts, not just for initial contacting, but for your follow-up conversations with people, and you're, and you're confident with that, it becomes a lot easier to go out there and generate these kinds of numbers. So guess what? Everything flows then. You have the two-way conversations, you set the appointments, you get the listing agreements, and then you get the sales. So it's a, it's a really, it's a wonderful creative formula, but if you apply yourself to it and you go through these steps and you really make sure you nail them, you can really have a wonderful career in, in real estate. Uh, Jane, any other questions before yes. I before I go on? Well, we do. Um, another uh, someone has asked um, about if you can give us an example of maybe a 15 second telephone script, so or a hook that you use maybe or ha have used in the past to keep them from hanging up on you in the first 15 seconds. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, I, I that's that's probably a, a um, that's probably a, something for another conversation uh but you know i i really 50 percent or what do they say 80 percent is nonverbal, right so it's you've got to have a relaxed thing and it is all about rather than telling you exactly the words to say let me tell you what the words need to say underneath them you have to have warmth in your voice you have to be relaxed you know you have to um uh, let them know that you're there not to take money from them like, I'm not calling you for what you can give me. I'm calling you to see how I can help you. And, and if you can convey that in the first 10 to 15 seconds, uh, you know, the worst, the worst, I'll give you the worst script I've ever heard. I showed up in an open house and the broker walked up to me and said, so did you bring your checkbook? <laughs> I'm like, what? You know, like, I'm here to give you money. No, 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 no. You should be asking me like, hey, are you living in the neighborhood? And, and uh, you know, great to have you come by. And because uh, you know, 80% of people go to open houses from the neighborhood. But hey, the question is, hey, then do you know anybody? Are you thinking of selling your house down the road? Or is there any information I can give you about real estate? I think one of the best quotes I've heard is um, from a coach is, everybody you make eye contact with has a question about real estate. So if I was to tell you, you know, what in your script needs to be there, it is to find out and let them know you're here to answer their questions. You're not there to take money from them. You're here to answer their questions because everybody, to paraphrase, everybody you have a conversation with, everybody you say hello to has a question about real estate. And if you can get that through in your script, you're well on your way to having a great career in, in the business. Okay, what other questions do we have, Jane? All right, I'm going to give you another question, which may lead us into some of the other slides you have, too, is what are some of the best practices for tracking your conversations slash leads, especially when you're making hundreds of calls a day? Oh, man, that is true. Um, well, um, uh, you know, our KDNA Goal Tracker, I'll show you just a, a couple things about that, but we're, we're a behavioral goal tracking system. We're, we're actually tracking the behavior of you, the agent, not the behavior of the client. So when you're now you're wanting to track each individual client, now you need a CRM system. Uh, and that I had, I mean, I never found one I really liked, to be honest, I had two or three of them and I would kind of move back and forth between them. Like my, my auto dialer had a CRM system that I hated. <laughs> so then I had an online system and then I had another system. Um, most people end up with a spreadsheet, to be honest, where they put their key people in there and they're tracking them that way um, or they use Outlook and they create different folders uh, for different, you know, ABC clients or so forth. It, it, it's a problem that really hasn't been fully solved in the industry. 
which is a great client tracking system. We are, we are an agent tracking system. We track your behavior. So you create the clients in the first place. <clears throat> but that's a great question. I never really found a solution. And I know people that use Outlook and that use spreadsheets or they, they buy a CRM system. So uh, that's, uh, that's the best answer I can give. What else we got? So, Anything okay. else, Jane? Um, well, if you want to, uh, one of the things we could maybe continue on and do Q and A at the end. So you've answered the initial okay, question. So, we have a couple other. No, ones. these are these are great questions. Okay, so so next slide. So okay, so again, um, you know, with your conversion ratios, guess what? You won't do those numbers. You won't even know if you're doing those numbers unless you track what you're doing. And it, and the tracking not only keeps you accountable to yourself but it makes you aware of what you need to do and what you haven't done. So you do the things you need to do. Like if I wasn't tracking my numbers Sunday afternoon, I'd go, ah, let's have a barbecue. And then six months from now, I can't make my mortgage, right? So because I was tracking my numbers, I go, oh, holy crap, I got to do 100 more calls this week. And I went in my home office and spent three hours doing that. So, and that's why people who track their numbers are 80% more productive. I'm going to keep hitting that. <laughs> and we've actually done studies with KDNA. We looked at a real estate office and we looked at the agents that were not tracking their numbers versus those that were consistently tracking their numbers week after week, month after month. And guess what? The non-tracking group was making about 60000 a year and the tracking group was making almost $150,000 a year. They were over 100% more productive. And again, here's just one example of a tracking sheet you can use. <clears throat> now, KDNA, real briefly, we are we track the behavior of the agent, and that's what produces the uh, the clients in 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 the first place. So, your behavior, all the things we've been talking about, the grade eight. The point is to create the clients uh, so you actually can make sales. Now, we uh, do an online uh, mobile smartphone based tracking system. You can see on the left hand side, it's all color coded. It's like being at a stoplight red, yellow, green, uh, red, you know, no progress on your goal. And then light green, yellow, light green, dark green, color go, color money, you've hit 100% of your goal. And blue sky's the limit. And it's all color coded. You update it on your smartphone and it flows in an online dashboard for you individually or for your coach to see how everybody's doing and how you're doing and, and help you meet your goals. So that's what we do with KDNA. And if you want any more information, you can go to our website at kdna.com and so if you want any more information on the grade eight or Katie any goal tracker or a free copy of the call and contact sheet, this thing right here, uh, just go ahead and email me again at steveanknowledgedna.com or again, go to our website at katiena.com. Click on the contact us button and let me know, let us know what you want. We're happy to send it over to you. Okay, Jane, what other questions do we have from the folks? Another question we have are, what are the best resources to tap into for lead generation for a new agent? And I also want to maybe throw in there the difference between a one-way contact and a two-way conversation, which I know you've kind of talked about, but I know you've been in, sure. you know. Okay, so kind of two questions, like like if you were a new agent, like, like what is the best way to build your business? Yep. Well, I, I would yeah. say, you know, the first thing you need, you know, in my, now again, this is my opinion, and you're going to find other opinions, so here's my opinion. Uh, is to find out what what is your most comfortable way of of lead generating. For some people, it's door knocking. There's that, there's that guy in San Fernando Valley. He's out there in 100 degree weather, two hours every day. And I know other very successful real estate agents that started their business in farming and door knocking. Uh, what's amazing to me is I live in a nice neighborhood in Southern California, and I think once every two years, an agent comes and knocks on my door, and I'm just astounded. Like, wow, like, like, you know, if I was a new agent, I, you know, farming, by the way, is you pick a particular area, and you'd work with your broker on this, like, you know, to make sure, you know, your other agents aren't working in that, same, that exact same area, perhaps, uh, and you just start developing relationships with people in, in, that, uh, in that neighborhood. Uh, so door, door knocking is one way. I was very comfortable with technology. You know, I developed a software company after being in sales. So I was doing a lot of internet leads and I worked with different, different internet lead companies, found the ones that worked, found the one that sucked. I got rid of the ones that were terrible and I just bought the leads that worked. And you know, that took a lot of work and I had all sorts of systems set up on an auto dialer. I mean, that worked for me. Um, and then there are agents that do open houses uh, the, you know, they're definitely agents that don't want to host their open houses. They're too busy with other things. And so as a new agent, I would definitely, you know, look at that if that fit my personality. Absolutely what every agent should be doing 
particularly starting out, is who do I know? Letting them know I'm in real estate, uh, really letting them know I'm really here to help, and I really want to help people uh, you know, get the best real estate solutions they can in their lives, and I'm here to serve. I'm here in a place of service. Uh, again, Zig Ziglar says, great quote, you can get everything you want out of life if you help enough other people get what they want out of life. And, and you can, if, if, if there's only one set of values you have, if, if that's your set of values, you're going to do well. So keep that in mind. Jane, are there any other questions that we have? Anything else we can answer for folks? You know, uh, unfortunately due to time, but we don't have any more. We had a lot of questions and, and uh, we appreciate everyone doing that. Um, I think it's time that we have to wrap up because unfortunately live programming has its has a time limit. So. Thank you, Steve. I want to also sure, thank everyone. I, I want to also thank everyone uh, for coming today and watching Real Experts, which is a knowledge sharing presentation platform designed to bring the most timely, market sensitive, and proven success strategies to the real estate professional. Again, Steve, we thank you for all your information and we thank everyone for listening and for participating in our chat room. And again, take care. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Have a great year ahead. Take care. Bye.